Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new single board computer or development board from a company known as UE2. Recently I was browsing the web looking for new single board computers and I came across this, the YY3568. Not too expensive, coming in at around $72 to $75 depending on where you pick it up. I'll leave some links to Amazon if you're interested in learning a little more, but it definitely looks promising. And, you know, in my search, I went over to their website and noticed that they have some amazing documentation for the boards that they do offer, and that's what kind of led me to want to go ahead and pick this thing up. As you can see, it's not as small as a Raspberry Pi. This is more of a development board. We have tons of I.O. from an M.2 slot for an SSD. It's got a SIM card slot so we can add a 4G module, USB 3, USB 2, HDMI, dual gigabit Ethernet. Everything you need in one of these boards is here. And inside of the box with the base kit, you're going to get the board and a 12 volt power supply. This is 12 volt to amp. The model I have here is the four gigabyte model. We also have some eMMC storage, but we could also boot the operating system that we want to run from a micro SD card or an M.2 SSD. This did come with Android 11 pre-installed on the eMMC module. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video, but they also offer a Debian build over on their website. And if everything goes well with Android here, we will do a video running Debian on this. There's a lot that I want to test, but I figured we'd go ahead and get the basics out of the way. Like we saw, this board contains a lot of I.O. And on the bottom here, we've got our SIM card slot, a PCIe 3.0 M.2 slot. This will support up to a 2280 M.2 SSD, DSi interface, EDPI interface, and micro SD card slot. Moving around to the top, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, two USB 3.0 ports, an RTC connector, two USB 2.0 ports, full-size HDMI. It's got an external speaker and mic connector. Our DSi interface and CSi interface is up top here. Our GPIO pins, UR debug, it's got an infrared interface that you can actually add on to this. Fan connector to cool down that CPU. And when it comes to the overall specs, they do offer this with a few different configurations. But with all of those configurations, you will get the same CPU. It's the Rockchip RK3568. It's an ARM SoC. The GPU is a Mali G52 2EE. You can get this with either 2, 4, 8, or 16 gigabytes of RAM, 4 to 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage, but remember, we can run our operating system from a micro SD card or an M.2 SSD. And right now, over on their website, they do have images for Android 11, Debian 10, and Open Harmony. This does come with a 12 volt 2 amp power supply, but it's got a wide voltage range because you can actually run this from a 19 volt adapter also. Once you head over to the website, you can choose the board that you want to learn more about. Wiki and blog. We're going to head over to the wiki and everything is laid out really nicely. So we're going to go with that YY3568. Over here, we've got a ledger. Quick start guide. Bring us right to it. Use the Android system. Use Debian system. Build system. Debian application development guide. And when it comes to let's just say use the Android system. Settings all mapped out so you know exactly what to do with this board you're not going to be left in the dark and this is one reason i really do like this website and you know the board manufacturer in general a lot of these boards that are coming to the market don't have great documentation like this and you know it's really rare to see this so i'm glad that they have this set up already ready to go and i found out over on their website that they have a new x86 board coming this looks really interesting it's got the intel n5105 They've got a 4 gig model, 8 gig, 16, 179 for the 16, 114 for the 8, and 99 for the 4. Hopefully I can get my hands on one of these. I'd go with probably the 8. I'm going to see if I can because I think this would be a really interesting little x86 board. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the Android operating system on the YY3568. Okay, so here we are with Android 11 running on the board. It's actually pretty quick. Now, the first thing I noticed when I started up the operating system that they offer over on their website is it doesn't have Google Play, but since we're running Android 11, it's really easy to install. There's tons of tutorials online on how to do this. So now I have full access to the Play Store, went through, downloaded a few applications, and I'm running this from eMMC, so I've only got 16 gigabytes of storage right now, but you could run this from a larger SD card. It's going to be a bit slower on SD, but we also have an SSD slot on here, the M.2 on the bottom, and they offer an image that will boot from that SSD. Checking out IDA64 here, just want to show you, CPU, we've got that Rockchip 3568, 
for a 55 cores up to 2 gigahertz, and yeah, it will boost up to 2. Now, when it comes to video playback on a board like this, unfortunately, we're not going to get any kind of widevine support. It will run Netflix and HBO Max if you wanted to, but you're only going to get SD content. From YouTube, we can go up a bit. And from here, we'll just go to 1080, so advanced. We'll do 1080, and I can turn Stats for Nerds on just to see if we can get some good 1080p playback on this board. Right up here, we've got our drop frames, which is none right now. And let me see here, I'm just going to actually buffer ahead a bit. We had one drop frame when we skipped ahead there, but overall not bad for 1080p playback. Remember, we're at 1080p, 60fps right now. 4K is pushing it a bit. I did get a bunch of drop frames and I kind of suspected that would happen with the 3568. And since we're running Android right now, I figured we'd test out a few native Android games and some emulation. I know this board isn't going to run something like Genshin Impact very well, but there are Android games that we could run on this at full speed. And first up, we've got Minecraft. You know I had to test this, where I ate chunks and I did turn fancy graphics off. We're not quite at 60 FPS. I can see a little bit of stutter in here and there. I'd say we're in the upper 30s right now, maybe uh, mid 40s, but yeah, not quite at 60. And I was really hoping that we could run this really smoothly, but I'm not sure how well it's transferring over to a YouTube video. Got that stuttering going on every once in a while. But I mean, it is playable and we could always drop the resolution down on the whole board itself to 720p. Right now we're at 1080. I also wanted to test at least one racing game, so I just went with Asphalt 8 because it's quicker to download than uh, Asphalt 9. And I had a lot of apps installed, so I kind of filled up my 16 gigabytes of storage here. Again, we could add more storage with an SSD or an SD card, but I just figured we'd run it all from the eMMC. And of course, we have to check out some emulation. So first up, we've got N64. Conquer's Bad Fur Day, and I'm using the Moopin 64 plus FZ core here. Not bad. It's actually running really, really well. This is a harder one to emulate, and I thought the 3568 could handle something like this, so let's take it up just a bit more. And that's going to be Dreamcast using the Redream emulator. Here we have Daytona running at full speed, looking really good. I also tested a couple more, like Soul Calibur, another one that ran at full speed. But unfortunately, when I got up to uh, Sonic Adventure 2, we were at about 55 FPS. And I probably should have just moved over to the Flycast core with that game on this chipset. But the final thing I tested here was PSP. Using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Ghost of Sparta, 1x resolution, Vulcan back in with all of the hacks on. We're really close to running this at a constant 60, but we do get some dips under there. And again, I do have all of the hacks on. I actually didn't think it was going to run this well, seeing the performance we got with Redream and Sonic Adventure 2. I figured it was going to fall right on its face. But I'd say this is playable on this little board. So overall, not too bad, but it would be nice to have, you know, a more powerful chip. The 3568 isn't the top of the line rock chip right now, the 3588 is, and that thing can definitely outperform this all day long, but those boards are a lot more expensive. I think the cheapest one I saw was like around $120. You can pick this up for around $65 to $70 depending on where you get it. I'll leave a link to Amazon in the description in case you're interested in learning a little more, maybe picking one of these up. But I'd like to know from you in the comments below, would you want to see Linux running on this? They do have a Debian build over on their website that we could install. And with something like that, I would probably install it to an SSD just to get the maximum speeds that I could. It would probably function all right from the eMMC module, but uh, then we're only working with 16 gigs on the board that I have right now. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments below. But you know, with this company here, the thing I'm most excited about is their new upcoming x86 board. I know it's only got that N5105, but at $99, this could be a great little emulation device. Looks like we're going to have a pretty decent cooling system on that board. It supports a 2280 M.2 SSD and a Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth module. And since it's an x86 CPU, we could install basically any variant of Linux that we want and Windows 11 on this thing. So I think it's going to be really cool. Can't wait to get my hands on it. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. Like always, thanks for watching.